Hello and welcome. And I think this is the first episode of what I hope it's a really good series of interviews with different type of people from different aspects of life. For my first ever episode of what I call Brew It, like a podcast, like an, a podcast, I want to touch upon three topics. The first one is explaining what Bruit is all about. The second one is how you moving abroad actually changed my life. Then I want to discuss how a university degree is worthless in these days. And last but not least, how having social media, no social media for the past two years as of now, has completely changed my life. Now, I really don't know how to do this, actually, where to, what to do with my hands, everything. It's going to be a lot of trial and error, bringing people in. But I'm curious about their stories, so that's actually how I came up to this podcast idea. I was curious to interview a lot of different people, what they're up to, how they got where they are what hiccups they have, what tips or advice they have for someone that is looking into doing what they're doing. And I hope that it resonates with a lot of you and that it helps you find meaning and live a happier and more fulfilled life. So I do have a sentence that I wrote about what this podcast is all about. In this podcast, we will be interviewing creators, entrepreneurs, professors, freelancers, and people that spark my and your curiosity with the single intention of exploring the intersection between making money and living a happy, healthy, and fulfilled life. I feel that I'm at a point where I could, of course, continue making videos around what it means to be a, living a fulfilled life and being happy with the things that you do. Or I could also start bringing people that perhaps have a different view on what living a happy, fulfilled life is. I have already have a few conversations. Today I had one with a, an old university prof professor of mine that he studies development economics. I've had interviews with three different creators that do complete different things. One is a sports creator, another one is a men's health creator, another one is productivity and fashion creator, and another one is a software engineer that quit his job and is doing this full time. And they all have this one thing in common that is passion and determination to achieve what they want to achieve. And I find that message that it's worth sharing with my audience especially listening different points of view on what and how they got there. I don't want to spoil whole conversations that I already had, but one of them studied a whole career, worked in the industry for four years, five years, 10 years. And all of a sudden they realized that it was not what they were happy doing. And that's something that I'm also struggling a little bit myself. So hearing these stories, of people, how they got where they are, what they are doing. I feel like it's gonna not only help me, but help a lot of people out there, especially with the type of questions that I'm trying to ask. I'm always gonna be asking the same exact question to start with. Who are you? What do you do? And why should someone listen to you? And that question is not about being cocky, it's more about curiosity in terms of trying to see how they define themselves. Because it's easier to be defined by others, but it's not easy to define yourself and define who you are and why should someone listen to you. So I find that interesting to see. People start with my name, do this and that, and why should people listen to do? It's a unique question that triggers a conversation from there. 
And I think it's actually interesting that I would answer that one today. Why? Who am I? What do I do? And why should someone listen to me? I feel that getting to answer that question myself will put me and will give a different view and also view of who I am as a human being and will also make me reflect. Now, where does this podcast come from? Curiosity. Purely and only curiosity of discovering what's out there and helping provide my audience with value. And why brew it? That's an interesting question. I thought that brew it is, first of all, it relates to coffee and beer, but more coffee. And I feel like people brew a life. So you start taking care of it. The same way that you brew coffee to make it and get an end result that is something that you want to taste, it's that same way people can brew their lives and can cultivate and create a life to an end result of enjoying a cup of nice warm coffee, in, in this case, enjoying their lives. And why brew it? Because I want these conversations not to feel like an interview where the guest is only speaking, but it's more like a conversation, the same type of conversation that you will be having with a friend or someone that you're actually interested in knowing. Now, I'm going to be answering my own question. Who am I? What do I do? And why should someone listen to me? I am Matthias. I am 28 years old, married guy, living in the Netherlands for the past eight years. I was born and raised in Uruguay. And since the age of 12, I knew that I wanted to leave my country. I was not happy and feeling identified where I was. My mother tongue is Spanish. And that's maybe why sometimes you will hear me say V or B when I'm actually saying B or V. So we always say BB for both of them. So hope you bear with that. And why should someone listen to me? It's because what do I do? I am right now working full time for company in finance. I've worked the past few years also in finance consultancy and other jobs in finance. Have a bachelor in economics, a master in finance. And my whole life has always been about pursuing a, a career and growing in the corporate ladder. But uh, later up on in the path, on that path, I discovered that that's not per se what I want to do and what I should be doing. So right now, for the past two years, I've been creating content. I'm just helping people find a fulfilling life. I do that by making videos on productivity on self-development, on personal finance, and now interviews that I hope help people find themselves. That's something that I'm still struggling with. As of late, I'm actually feeling like I'm getting there. Why should someone listen to me? It's because for the past 15 years, I've always strived for a life that I didn't have. And when I was living my dream life, my dream life was not my dream life anymore, but it was just my life. I feel like you should always be striving for something, but once you achieve your dreams, what's after? Your dreams are always changing. And when I moved to the Netherlands eight years ago, I was forced to grow up. I was forced to learn about money myself. I was forced to learn how to cook, take care of myself, do taxes, go to the doctor. Man, that one's difficult. Calling dentist. Yeah, weird calling the dentist. But I've been doing that for the past eight years. I was forced to grow, learn, live in different cultures. And I feel like I have a lot of to offer. And I think that you could learn a lot from what I have to say and what I can share with you. Not only from my life experiences, but because we're all different. Same way that you definitely have something to share and should listen to you that same applies to me. Now I mentioned that eight years ago, I moved to the Netherlands in pursuit of a better life for myself and that of my future kids. 
That's something that I really wanted to do since I was 12 years old. And I finally achieved. I did everything I could. I started in international school. I started, got acceptable grades. And then I went to work, paid my bachelor halfway myself, halfway my parents, my master myself. I saved a lot of money just to be able to be sitting here right now. And I never realized the effort that that takes mentally for someone to just leave everything that they know behind and jump on the unknown because that's what I was doing. I was jumping on the unknown. I was moving far away from home by myself just because I had in my mind that determination that I needed to do this because that's what I wanted. And that's still is probably one of the best decisions I've ever done, I've ever taken. And it didn't come to my head how incredible that thing is until one month and a few days ago I got married and on my father's speech and my friends talking to me and my father-in-law's speech, they all mentioned the same thing, how brave I was to jump into the unknown and moving all across the world on pursuit of my dreams. And when you think about it, it's crazy how many of us are actually just doing things without knowing what's going to happen just because we want it so bad, because we feel that there's a better life out there, a better life unknown, whether you're immigrating to another country, whether you're changing your jobs, whether you are quitting your job even without doing anything. There's something about the uncertainty of not knowing that I'm taking risks that just makes life more exciting. And that's something that changed about me. I was someone that was really stable, really thinking, oh, I need to grow the corporate ladder. I need to get a job, get promoted, find a wife, get kids. And not anymore. I feel like my life has changed for better since I met my wife five years ago. I feel like I'm someone different than what I was in terms of mentality. I always thought that I needed to do those things, but at what cost? Was I actually having fun doing those things? Was I actually true to myself or was I just was it just doing it because that's what I was expected of me doing it? And it's crazy to think that a small guy, a 20-year-old guy, moves all across the world, 15,000 kilometers away from everything he knows, to a place where he doesn't speak the language, has never been, has never even heard of the city that he moved in, Tilburg. Just... Because you know that there's better things out there to do than staying where you are. The status quo is something that you know, but the unknown is more exciting than the status quo. And moving abroad changed my life because it opened so many doors, so many doors. I met my wife, I've got work experience, my mind's changed in the way I think and everything. I met amazing friends, probably the best friends that I've had ever are from here, have traveled through Europe, but the most important, I chased a dream and the hope of a happier life, which I'm still trying to get there, but that 20, if that 20 year old could see where I'm at right now, knowing everything that has happened and where I'm at now, I would be shitless proud of myself, definitely proud of myself, of what I've done, where I am. I'm sitting here in my house, married, 20 or 8 years old, never in my dreams have, would have, have thought that I would have been married at the age of 28. And whether that was doing it by working somewhere else, even washing dishes, or by studying here, or just getting a job somewhere, I would do this 
over and over again. Now that gets me to my next point, which is, I feel like a university degree is worthless. And I have a point for that. I have two degrees, I have a bachelor and a master, but at what cost? Because I actually studied those things hoping and thinking that that's what I should study because I was good at maths, I was good at economics, I liked history, I liked studying a little bit, and in the end I realized that I was not happy. I just continued because, yeah, I already spent three years of my life, so might as well just do one more and then finish it. So that's some cost of thinking. I already did so much, so might as well just continue. Has stuck me into a place where I'm not per se as happy as I could be. Of course, I then studied a master in finance, but because I was lazy and I thought that instead of studying two years, if I started one year, I could go and make money and live a life and grow the corporate ladder. And I was wrong. I couldn't have been more wrong doing that. Looking back, I should have done something that gave me more passion, perhaps in that first year. But if I could tell something to that guy is just quit that studies and go do something in marketing, which is something that you're actually more enjoying or something around videography. And looking back, I should have also started a YouTube channel eight years ago when I first moved to the Netherlands. But yeah, I couldn't, I cannot change those things. And the only thing I can do is learn from those and move forward and take those experiences and be where I'm at. So that's one thing, the cost of doing something that perhaps you're not happy with, just because those are the expectations set by your parents and society to do, and perhaps the sunk cost fallacy of thinking that you are doing that because you already did a certain amount of period. But then if you look and into the brightest minds, they've never been to college. Just take a look at Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos. They also went to, they did go to university, but down the line, yeah, they have their incredible minds, but they quit because they realized that taking that risk of doing something that perhaps was more fulfilling for them would pay off better than staying in the path of certainty that they were. Just think of what would have been of life if Mark Zuckerberg hadn't created Facebook, if he hadn't taken the leap of quitting his Harvard study to start freaking Facebook. We probably wouldn't be having Instagram or there would be something else for sure, but we wouldn't be where we are right now. And I find that a thought which keeps on the back of my mind, like I studied finance, I studied economics, but what did I study for? Who did I study for? Of course, I learned a lot and I'm still applying quite a lot of it in terms of mentality. But at what cost? I, I always repeat that question. At what cost? My mental health is above me and that's something I didn't know back then. My mental health suffered a lot just from going to university because of thinking that I would be happier later down the road if I continue studying and continue being where I was when that was not the case. I feel like if you are not happy with your studies, you just reconsider and think of, are you doing something because of what you want to be doing or are you doing it because of what your parents or society or your friends think it's best for you? My wife, for example, she did sports and now she's not working in sports. She didn't like it, so she changed. And now she's working on marketing and I'm incredibly proud of her for doing that, taking that leap of doing something that she's happy with instead of doing something that she's not happy with and continue on that path just because, yeah, I studied this, I cannot do anything else. You can, and you definitely should do something else if you know that that's not what you want to do. That's why nowadays you hear a lot of people quitting their jobs and opening a company because they believe in themselves and they worked to get where they are and they take risks and are working now just for that business and for themselves. There's a caveat there, 
we only hear the positive stories, but how many stories have we heard of people taking that leap and ended up working at a McDonald's or anywhere else? I remember there was this one YouTuber trio that were like comedians and then they ended up like creating a band. And the guy is now one of them. That whole fame and success didn't pay out. And now the guy is working at the peanuts factory. Is he happy with it? Perhaps he is. Perhaps he got tired of working as working as an influencer. But perhaps he's not. And if he's not, then you should consider those things are things that can happen. Luckily, I have my human capital. And that's something that I was discussing today. As a backup, I know that I will always be able to go back into something related to finance, even though if I take a leap, for example, I know that I'm working towards a goal of creating my own company and living my own life on my own terms instead of living the life of a terms of a society that perhaps is not what I want. And I'm also proud of the people that decide to go and live in a van, for example, and work from a van. And then they end up saving a lot of money just because they're living from a van, perhaps not even earning a lot, but they are happy with the lives that they have. You can still make the life of your dreams at your own terms. Perhaps it will take longer. And perhaps if you stay where you are working for a university degree that it's worth less for yourself, you will get where you want to get. It will take longer, that's for sure, but it's possible. And I hope these words encourage you to do that. Now, my last topic of this somehow of a podcast, I think, how having no social media for the past two years changed my life. I think there's a positive and a negative side on this. And I want to touch upon both. The positive and the negative. And I'm going to start with the positive side. It strengthened my relationship with my wife. Because she now doesn't see that, I don't know, people that follow me or whatever. And there's a certain level of different type of trust, knowing that the second positive thing is I have more time to do other stuff before I thought that oh if I'm waiting at the doctor for example I can just scroll through Instagram and then you're really getting into a mindset and a mentality of just doing stuff to do stuff when perhaps it's not smart or good for your brain constantly being triggered I'm reading this book called Nixon, where it states that you should do nothing, absolutely nothing for a while. And that that actually triggers creativity and that that helps with your brain and with your state of mind. Because if you're constantly scrolling, perhaps you scroll six times in a minute, in 10 minutes, that's 60 times approximately. That is a lot of impressions that you get in 10 minutes. That's a lot of triggers that you get into your brain. And I got rid of that by not looking and comparing and not staring at my phone or wasting my time on that. I also have more time for myself to do other stuff because I'm not scrolling. For example, I'm writing instead at the moment. Or it helps with your creativity because you're not getting frustrated seeing what other people are doing but you're rather concentrating and focusing on your own stuff. I feel like that has given me a a little more of a sense of self-control and self-reliance and self-thought and self-energy and encouragement, seeing that if I would have... I still have that with YouTube, for example. If I look at a creator that started at the same point as me and now they have like 200,000 subscribers and I have less than 2,000, I do feel like I compare myself, but I do it at a smaller level because I'm not having also Instagram and TikTok and anything else. 
Now, that being said, I do have now, as from this moment, TikTok and Instagram for the podcast. It's called Brewed Pod. Go follow it. And I'm going to create my own company and I'm going to start posting as well on another account, which I yet didn't create, just to separate those two things. Now, on the negative side, it's that I feel like my growth has stunk a little bit because of not putting things out there and not being social out there with videos that I'm having or that I create. I feel like I could be more creative also creating 60 seconds videos rather than 10 minutes or half an hour. And that is something that perhaps has not given me the growth that I hoped. On the other hand, I feel like not posting and not having social media doesn't really allow you to reach out to creators. But there's other ways because I've met other people like Robert Grading or Oliver Wright, great people and what I think are friends that I met one through emailing him and the other one through LinkedIn. So there's definitely ways to make it and get connections on social media. I do think that the positives outweigh the negatives. And I think that if I end up without social media, it's my own choice and not that of society. And being two years without social media has probably been some of the best time of my life, even though it has been the most difficult one. I'm not constantly frustrated looking at where I could be, but I'm not. Because right now I'm here in my study room sitting. But I could also be, for example, two days ago I was at work. Now I'm sitting in my study room and I'm doing whatever I want. And I'm not comparing myself with people that are perhaps in Bali right now or in a festival or somewhere living in a van. Because I know that my life, my turn will come. And I hope that it will come. It just takes time. But if I was comparing myself all the time to someone out there, I would be more unhappy than I currently am. Because currently I'm not the happiest, but I'm not unhappy. I'm not like a stable mood I would say now I'm gonna be making a whole video of having no social media for two years how it changed my life but I wanted to get those thoughts out there this was a little bit of all over the place podcast I feel like but I just wanted to get my thoughts out there on these four topics that I discussed why it's what's brew I wanted to get brew it out to the world because I've been working on it for the past month interviewing all different type of people, reaching out to different type of creators, entrepreneurs, everything. And I find it fun. I find it incredibly fun to be able to be doing this and it gives me a lot of energy. I hope you are able to get a lot of insights from these conversations that I will be having with people. And I hope that you tag along the way by subscribing. So yeah, thank you for watching and staying until the end and I'll see you I'm not yet sure whether I'll be posting every week for this or having a second video every second week, but definitely at least two a month. So I'll see you when I post one in next week. See you.